If you're looking for the best running shoes for overpronation, here's a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Gel Kayana Light. The Kayano is a titan, lasting through 27 iterations. So you don't mess with that name or shoe without some serious forethought. It delivers boatloads of cushioning and stability, but not every runner needs that level of protection. For those who want something lighter, there's the light. Unlike its namesake, the light uses just a single piece of midsole foam to provide cushioning and stability. The standard model has a dual density post on the medial side, plus a hard plastic trustic bridge in the midfoot to help guide a pronating foot. A six scallops the light's lateral outer edge while bolstering the foam's medial side. The design helps the sole compress on landing and then provides extra resistance as you roll to midstance. Our wear testers, including longtime Kayano wearers, thought the shoe delivered in both areas and felt faster underfoot. Even neutral runners, like myself, found the shoe less intrusive than a traditional post. I could feel a little extra pressure under my arch, but nothing that was irritating, said runner in chief Jeff Dangate. And the shoe retains some of the Kayano's premium qualities, like a soft tongue and collar, which dial up comfort for long runs. Moving on to the next at number two with Saucony Guide 14, a more stable version of Saucony's ride. The guide pairs a lightweight TPU medial post and sturdy heel counter that lend extra support to a new PWR on midsole. In the 14, Saucony reformulated PWR run, making the lion's share of the cushioning even softer and more responsive while a thinner layer of PWR run plus sits on top for additional shock absorption. It's a shoe meant for long distances because it doesn't give in or give up, one tester said. This model feels like it has a little more cushioning than prior models. It's a solid choice for runners that want support, but not so much that it feels limiting to the stride. The revamped upper holds the arch in an internal gusset beneath the new closed non-stretch mesh switch that our testers said provided a more locked and fit around the midfoot. Last but not least, the cozy details for comfort are evident in this update. We especially appreciated tying the thick, soft laces and sliding our heels over the plush ankle padding. The number three position is held by Brooks Launch GTS8. You're not wrong if you thought GTS stood for go to shoe. This year, Brooks is simplifying its naming convention by pairing stability shoes to its neutral siblings and tacking on GTS now redefine as go to support. The next transcendent and bedlam, for example, have been named the Glycerin GTS and Levitate GTS. And in the case of the Ravna, it's now being called the Launch GT as a light stability shoe that's speedy like the neutral launch. Testers appreciated the comfortably firm cushioning and found Brooks's holistic guide rail system, firm foam along the medial and lateral sides of the heel serve as bumpers to align the knee and ankle supportive. The most noticeable revamp besides the name is the new Air Mesh Upper. It's lighter and more breathable, but wear your tall socks. Some testers found that the collar sat higher up on the ankle, which could cause rubbing on the lateral side. Next at number 4, we have Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit 2. The Infinity Run isn't explicitly a stability shoe in the classic sense, given its stability features that feel a bit more intuitive than the traditional approach. Issuing a medial post, Nike went with a high arch and installed a horseshoe shaped guide rail on the rear of the shoe. The rails, similar to what we've seen on models like the Brooks Launch GTS above, are designed to stymie overpronation while not encumbering neutral runners. That, combined with the flared out forefoot and wide base, led our testers to say that the Infinity Run had a very secure and planted feeling. Bouncy React foam underfoot still provides plush cushioning and shock absorption, while more soft collar padding boosts comfort around the ankle, where some testers experienced rubbing in the previous version. The lone trade-off, more of sole rubber improved grip and durability, but tacked on some weight. Though you may not even notice, the gains are less than half of an ounce. The number 5 position is held by Brooks Glycerin GTS-19. At just a few tenths of an ounce, heavier than the standard Glycerin, the Glycerin GTS-19 provides stability with Brooks's holistic guide rail system. Denser foam on the lateral and medial sides of the shoe act as bumpers to lessen erratic knee movement brought on by overpronation. This extra foam makes the shoe slightly stiffer than its neutral counterpart, but there is still plenty of give that allows your foot to flex during push-off. Like the Glycerin 19, the GTS has a DNA loft midsole, 
which provides responsive cushioning and makes the shoe easy on the joints for recovery runs and dependable. When you go farther than that turnaround point on your usual trek, though it isn't our first choice for speed sessions. I've been running in Brooks Adrenaline GTS for 10 years, one tester said. This new Glycerin GTS has all the support and stability I love in the Adrenaline, but with more heel cushioning and a slightly softer feel. The number six position is dominated by Hoka 1 1 Array 5. The Array Lens Over Pernator's support with a dense Eva J frame, so called because it wraps around the heel and medial side of the shoe in a J shape. A padded tongue and heel collar lock in your ankle without causing friction, and a new pull tab, reminiscent of the spoiler on a sports car, allows you to slide into the trainer without creasing the back. The shoe's slightly curved rocker sole transitions quickly and rides light and smooth which let test editor Amanda Fur cruise comfortably at easy pace with enough get up for the unplanned fartlek. I used to save cushion stability trainers for recovery runs following a marathon, Fur said. Lately, however, I've been reaching for Hoka Zarahi as an everyday trainer, even on fast days. Now that the 5 has a more textured tread for tackier grip on slick surfaces. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Mizuno Wave Inspire 17. The Inspire continues to be Mizuno's trusted stability model providing a soft experience much like the popular Wave Rider bow with a more supportive midsole for overpernators. This 17th version uses a reshaped, zigzagging TPU wave plate to stabilize the underarch. It won't stop your foot from rolling inward, but it helps curb those pernation forces to keep you steady. That plate sits between a fresh wedge of Mizuno's new energy foam in the heel and a full-length top layer of euphoric. Both foams are EVA-based, but Energy is the more premium of the two materials and feels significantly softer underfoot. The heel cushioning is plush but not spongy so that it feels unresponsive or like your foot is completely sinking in, one tester said. While this shoe compares to the Brooks Glycerin GTS in terms of stability, the toe spring is flatter, which made toe-off feel less smooth. The number 8 position is held by 6GT2009 Trail. The GT2000 makes a good pick for runners who don't need a ton of support but still want something with a bit more stability than a neutral shoe for days on the trail. Flight foam and gel units at the heel and forefoot deliver reliable cushioning and a more forgiving ride than earlier versions we've tested, while a dual-density midsole and guidance truss help control excessive pronation. The ninth trail-ready version comes with a redesigned one-piece mesh that's reinforced around the arches for extra support and a more aggressive lugged-out sole. The best features of this shoe are the fit and comfort of the engineered mesh upper particularly in the toe box and the shoe's overall ride, said one tester. I've run in several iterations of the GT2000, and I truly believe that it continues to improve. Transitions from heel strike through toe off are seamless, with a springy feel as you leave the ground. Next at number 9, we have Ultra Provision 5. The Provision's upper underwent some major changes in its fourth iteration. Ultra has implemented its new end of arch a thin layer of mesh material under the footbed that wraps around the medial side of your foot, where it splits into three fingers to meet the tongue and become a part of the lacing system. The purpose of this technology is to ensure a more secure fit, which our testers verified, stating it gave the provision a customized appeal. The fifth iteration simplifies the of arch system with two fingers instead of three, but everything from the footbed down remains the same as the provision for. Ultralight Eva midsole foam creates a fast, bouncy, lightweight ride with extra support from a non-intrusive guide rail that counters over pronation without overcorrecting your gait. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by New Balance Fresh Foam 860 Velamin. With this update, the 860 officially joins New Balance's Fresh Foam ranks. A new top layer of softer material gives the Velamin a plusher step and feel, but the remainder of the midsole and sturdy medial posts still afford a stable ride. The shoe also upgrades the NB flared ankle collar, which more closely cradles the heel and also prevents any rubbing around the Achilles tendon. Testers agreed that though the 860 V10 felt surprisingly light and responsive, it would likely feel overbuilt for neutral runners. The Velavin is no different, said one tester. I ran anywhere from 5, 30 pace intervals to 8, 30 pace easy runs in these shoes, and the phrase that kept coming to mind was smooth ride. That's all for today. We upload product review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.